Welcome, Pumas, to our virtual Holy Week prayer service. We're so thrilled you took the time out of your busy schedules to sit and reflect and pray with us today. Obviously, this is going to look a little different than our, our regular prayer services, but I promise you'll see some familiar faces. So let's open our hearts and our minds to experience this together. Ad maiorum, de gloriam. We study, we work, we play for the greater glory of God. Let us pray. Creating and ever-present God, your son looked out and cried to you and missed his passion. Might we too seek you through our trials, through the crosses we bear in our lives today. Separated though we are by distance, might we come together as one community to pray, reflect, and remember the sacrifice of your son. Let us now open our hearts and our minds um, to hear the word of God from the Gospel according to John. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. We will now hear a reflection from the one and only Father JP. Our prayer service is all dealing with Holy Week. What exactly is Holy Week? Why is it that we celebrate Holy Week every year, right before Easter? When we think of Holy Week, what we're really experiencing and what we're really celebrating is a human experience that the human person Jesus went through. In Holy Week, we commemorate that last week in the life of the human Jesus, where we see someone who's gone from a real high to a real low a despairing low, Jesus being welcomed triumphantly into Jerusalem by a crowd that welcomes him as king, and then a few days later completely abandons him along with all of his disciples. Holy Week deals with Jesus' agony in the garden, where he experiences the depth of a loneliness and a disconnect and abandonment and isolation from friends who simply can't stay awake with him when he seeks to pray. 
And in some ways, that really is very much like what we are experiencing today, a disconnect, an isolation from our friends. Holy Week deals with the human Jesus embracing his death on a cross and his struggle to accept that. Holy Week reminds us that Jesus is embracing a very human experience, something that we all experience at some point or other in our life. We too go from incredibly highs to real ultimate lows. The causes can be external, like with this COVID-19 experience that we're all dealing with. Or it could be something internal, something that leaves us very raw and vulnerable, that has a certain power of darkness around it, and a certain power of darkness over us. We can see it within ourselves, in our vulnerabilities, how it creates darkness and how we think about ourselves, how we talk to ourselves, how we put ourselves down, or how we can be filled with a certain amount of shame and guilt. Both of those external causes and the internal causes connect us with mental health issues that we do need to deal with. We all need to deal with them. Well, what I find important in all of this is that just like the human Jesus, we wrestle with our inner darknesses so that it doesn't have power to limit us, to diminish life within us. Wrestling match that Jesus went through in the garden when carrying his cross upon the cross, these wrestling matches that we go through are not easy to do, nor are they brief. Sometimes they can be lifelong experiences. But by embracing that darkness within, by embracing that death and seeing how it diminishes us, it can lead to greater life, greater self-understanding, greater freedom so that we can make better choices in life. What's important for us to remember and to celebrate in this Holy Week, not just so much that we have this wrestling with very human experiences, but that we do not wrestle alone. And Jesus did not wrestle alone. He's reminding us, we do not wrestle alone. Our God is with us. Our God is within us, laboring within the darkness to bring forth life. We do not struggle alone, abandoned, cut off, isolated, we celebrate not being abandoned, but being so deeply loved and cared for that our God struggles in the midst of all of that, in the midst of that passion, that suffering and death. And the mystery within all of this is that we may not feel his presence. We may feel a sense of being alone, but we're not. We have to trust that he is with us. We have to believe that he's with us. And that's what the human Jesus wrestled with and ultimately gave him that interior freedom to embrace, to embrace that death, to embrace that humanness. Knowing that he was really saying yes to God's life flowing within him. I embrace the inner demon, the doubt, the fear, the isolation, knowing that somehow by understanding all of that and where it's coming from, it's leading me to life what we really celebrate in Holy Week is that it is directing us towards Easter, towards resurrection, the triumph of life over death. And with a student perspective on things, here's Devani Montez. Hello, Chris Ray, it's Devani. And what Holy Week means to me, it's a time to reflect and remember all the blessings God has given me. This year, Holy Week is different because we won't be able to physically be together in mass but we will be able to be together through faith and spirit during these challenging times i'm learning how to value the simple things in life and the people in my life please join me in praying for our community as we begin our prayers and petitions let us pray for the entire Cristo ray community students faculty staff volunteers sponsors work partners and all who have passed through our halls may they be safe healthy, and comforted during this time of uncertainty. We pray to the Lord. 
Faithful God, you are present during this time of distancing. Let us look to each other while we are apart, that we may never feel alone. We pray to the Lord. During this Lenten season, let us pray for all religions of the world, that during this time of confusion and fear, the message of love that all religions embody might bring peace and rest to our world. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all in our own respective homes. May we be emboldened to use our minds, hearts, and bodies to set the world ablaze with the fire of Christ's love come Easter. Let us pray for all those who have died and the loved ones who grieve their loss during this Lenten season, especially those who have been affected by the coronavirus. May they find comfort in the promise of the resurrection as we await Christ's own. We pray to the Lord. And for our closing prayer today, we welcome a poem by Laura Kelly Finucci, read by Miss Brunkhorst. When this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be, we were called to be, we hoped to be. And may we stay that way, better for each other because of the worst. Amen. Let us now open our hearts and pray the prayer Jesus taught us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. As we go forth from this place, let us do as we always do in this Christovite community, and send one another a sign of peace. And by that I mean, take out your phones, your email, your computers, whatever you have, and send a message of love and gratitude for somebody in our community or in your own. Tell them why you love them, why you're grateful for them, and why you're thinking about them this week. Be great today, Pumas. And we close this prayer service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pumas, let us remember that as we go forth into the world, we are guided by faith, prepared for life, and always serving others. Have a great day, Pumas.